We can add JavaScript code to our web page in two different ways, but they both use the script element. The script element was introduced to the HTML specification in version 3, and it was later fleshed out in version 4.01. The script element involves the use of the opening and closing tags. You cannot use XHTML syntax and self-close a script tag. You have to explicitly specify a closing tag. There's also a type attribute which we will set to text slash JavaScript. This is because some browsers support multiple scripting languages like Internet Explorer. Uh, it supports JavaScript as well as VB script. If this type attribute is not specified, then the browser has to guess what language is inside of the script element. Sometimes, or most of the time, it guesses correctly, and then there's a few times when it guesses incorrectly. So it's always a good idea to put the type attribute here. Uh, the first way to add JavaScript code is directly inside of a script element in between the opening and closing tags. So here I'm creating a variable called foo and I'm just giving it a value of 100. Don't worry about the syntax or anything like that. We're going to go over that uh, over the next few lessons. But this is JavaScript code embedded directly into our HTML page. It's kind of like uh, how you can put style sheets inside of our HTML page. But this really isn't the best way to do it because as far as maintenance is concerned, if we have JavaScript code that we want to use in multiple files, we're going to have to open up those multiple files in order to make any type of change or even just to simply add or remove our code from it. So a better solution is to use an external JavaScript file. And to do that, uh, here I have one. It's called lesson01 underscore sample dot js. And this is actually the try it. So we'll just go ahead and, and do that now. Uh, this is just some simple JavaScript. It creates a function, it creates a variable. It passes this variable to a function, a built-in function called alert. This will actually bring up a, uh, a dialog box within the browser, and it will show us this information here. And then we call or execute this inline script function which is what we define here so this is all within an external file there's no HTML or anything like that it's just pure JavaScript and inside of the opening script tag we add a source attribute and then we specify the external JavaScript file that we want to include within this web page. So here, source is pointing to lesson01 underscore sample dot js. This is a URL. Uh, right now, this is a relative URL because this JavaScript file is in the same folder as our HTML file. And I am just going to get rid of that space. Now as far as placement is concerned, traditionally we have always put our scripts within the head of the document, uh, but we have later learned that that's really not the best thing to do uh, as far as performance is concerned. When the browser loads an HTML page, it starts at the top and it starts loading HTML one line at a time. And whenever the browser gets to a script element, it stops loading the, the rest of the HTML and it loads the JavaScript code within the external file or within the element. And then only whenever it has loaded that JavaScript into its JavaScript engine, then and only then does it begin to parse the rest of the HTML document. As far as the user is concerned, they want their information as fast as possible. So because the browser stops loading the rest of the HTML, we have started to put our scripts at the bottom of our page, just right below the closing body tag. This allows the browser to load everything before it loads our scripts so that the user gets their web page first. So if they just want uh, to view uh, a couple of lines of text, they can do that, and then our browser will load the JavaScript code. So while the net download time is the same, 
there's a perceived performance gain because the user gets their content before any JavaScript is loaded into the browser. So that's how you add JavaScript to a web page.